Why did you want to become a stand-up comedian? I didn't. Um, I didn't want to become a stand-up comedian. When some of my friends went to Manchester University and I used to go and visit them and they used to go to a night in Manchester called Beat the Frog and it was like an amateur sort of open mic night at like a big comedy club and they persuaded me to do it and I did it and I nearly won on my first go and I got like a massive buzz from it and then I did another one about three days later. I slept on my friend's floor in Manchester for three days and I did a gig in Withington to I think there were about eight people in, uh, in this little bar. I died so badly. It was the awful, awful gig. And I did a few more after that, just sort of, you know, trying to work it out. And then all my friends kind of lost interest in it and they were all egging me on at the beginning. And I just, for some reason, kept going. Um, and I've just been doing it ever since. Cheer, whistle, make him feel welcome. He's absolutely fantastic. Give it up for Freddie Quinn! Yes, come on! Yes, what a nice welcome. Hello, Birmingham! Yeah. How are we? Are we well? Yeah. Good, it's a pleasure to be here. It's nice, nice to see so many people out having fun. That's lovely. No, God, I can't remember the best gig I've ever done. <laughs> I can remember, like, it's so weird that you, I can remember the the bad ones in, like, absolute detail. And then the best ones I just sort of forget instantly. It's like a curse. I can remember, like, clubs that are always good, like The Stand and The Frog and Bucket and places like that. They're just always really nice to play. I think that my best run of gigs was in Edinburgh in 2015, where I did the AAA showcase. And I just remember every single day it being sold out and every single day it being a really, really lovely gig. That's as close as I can remember. It's good to see so many of you having a drink because I, I don't really go out and drink. I'm 27 years old, don't really go out and drink. I go out one night of the year without fail and that's Halloween because I love dressing up. Give us a chief you dress up for Halloween. Yeah. Got a few people around here went with me on this one. Everyone else kind of over here just kind of went, grow up your fat bastard, that's fine. <laughs> i tell you what I did last Halloween. I dressed up as Dr. Frankenfurter from the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yeah, basically a serial killing transsexual, and why not? What I did, right, is I got this tight green dress that I just kind of peeled my way into like this. I got some black leggings, put them on my head, some black leggings. Got a big, big black bushy wig, and I put it on the head, big black bushy wig. Did my makeup all thick, really thick lipstick, really thick eyeliner. Got some white face paint around here, put some pearls around here. Oh, marvellous! I was dancing out of that taxi. I'm just a sweet transvestite. <laughs> and I went to a nightclub where I live in Preston, a nightclub called Squires, and they were having a fancy dress competition. And I came in third as Susan Boyle. <laughs> There's so many bad gigs. I've done one gig where a uh, clearly disabled person got on stage and tried to fight me. Uh, and no, nobody did anything either and I was in like a lose-lose situation um, because either obviously you don't want to you don't want to get the shit kicked out of you but similarly speaking the audience aren't going to take kindly to you punching a man with learning difficulties uh, that was bad um, I did I, oh I did the, the worst gig I've ever done in terms of just like it being bad was in Preston and somebody just put on a comedy night in the corner uh, on a Friday night. Uh, and so if you think about how busy that pub gets on a Friday night with students and people and all that, they just put a microphone where that DJ booth is next to where the pool tables were and we just like, go. And it was just, it was just unbelievably bad. I think um, the worst one in terms of a gig going horribly wrong, I did a gig, this was about four years ago, and it was a benefit gig for a woman <clears throat> who had cancer. And the night had gone really, really well. Dead good. Um, and then, just as I'm about to go on stage to close the night, these people start trying to come in uh, and they get asked for a ticket and that. And they start kicking off because it's their local pub and they objected to having to pay to have a drink in there. And then other people started kicking off with them 
because they thought that they were disrespecting the charity night. And a fight broke out, like at the, like a proper fist thrown, you know, all bodies kind of fight. And the compo was just trying to kill time until this fight had finished so he could bring me on. But then the fight lasted like way longer than a fight should last. It was like a brawl. <laughs> so he just brought me on. And so I gave like a running commentary on the because I because it was there was no point in just trying to be like right everyone come and look at me for a bit so I, I gave a running commentary on the fight which was quite funny and then they all settled down and then I started doing my set and it was going dead dead well I was having a great time and then I did <clears throat> a joke I can't remember what I did but it was a very it was like a mildly offensive joke it was like three or four out of ten on the joke offensiveness scale. And the woman whose charity night it was, the woman who we were raising money for, the woman with cancer, she walks from the back, she comes up to the stage, she walks in between the stage and the audience, she walks past, and then she walks past me, and she goes like that. And I'm like, okay, that's weird, because I thought this was going quite well. I was like, okay, so I went, right, I'll finish on this last joke. And she, she walked on stage, and she stood next to me, <laughs> whilst I was finishing the joke. And then before I even had a chance to finish it, she just took the microphone off me and went, right, I'm gonna do the raffle now. And then I just had to leave. So yeah, that was uh, that was pretty bad. Getting getting kicked off a charity fundraiser by the woman we were raising money for. That was a pretty, pretty dark moment. I'll tell you this, I'm a big fan of a compliment insult. You know when someone sets out to compliment you, but what they really do is insult you ten times worse? I fucking love that. I used to do this thing on stage about me being kind of a fat gentleman and how that's affected the amount of sexual partners I've had. I'm well aware that if we did a survey of all the people in the room who's had the most sexual partners, I'd come out somewhere near the bottom, but I'm fine with that. So on the flip side of that, if we did a survey of all the people in the room who's eaten the most Battenberg cake, I'd run away with the fucker. <laughs> Now, I've been led to believe that from time to time, people regret their sexual partners. I've never regretted a piece of Battenberg cake in a wank. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever anyone says, have you got any tips? Like every part of my brain is, just don't do it. Just don't do it. There's enough comedians. This is, you know, just, just be a gardener. I, I wish that I'd have just done anything else other than comedy. Like if I'd have been a, uh, a trumpet player or something. If if instead of doing a gig, I'd have just picked up a trumpet and just fucking blown it, just in any way, just with no goal in mind or anything like that, after six and a half years, I'd be fucking brilliant at the trumpet and people wouldn't ask me to tell them a fucking joke every time I go to a party or something like that. Don't do it, comedy's awful. <laughs> if, you, if you have to do it, then I would say um, write yourself five minutes that you th like, write ten minutes that you think is funny don't second guess yourself too much write ten minutes because you'll forget half of it on your first gig uh, take yourself down to um, you know a local open mic night or comedy clubs that run a new act night and just test it out and see how it goes and that's your first gig is always your hardest gig and once you get over that you know, once you get more comfortable on stage, then you can start thinking about whether it's for you and what sort of act you want to be. It's just taking the first step that's the hardest.